Hello all of my history loving friends. Welcome to the world of Madame Morbid. Uh, this is a history channel and I am your guide on any number of historical adventures. I'm here in Grapevine, Texas. I am standing at the intersection of Highway 114 and Dove Road and this is where H.D. Murphy and patrolman Ed Wheeler were killed by the Clyde Barrow gang. There's supposed to be a marker around here somewhere memorializing them. I can't find it. I'm ashamed to say we failed to see the memorial marker. It's a very busy intersection. We went, we made a couple of sweeps and neither one of us saw the memorial. And so we ended up parking the car and rather than try to tromp around finding it on foot, which I didn't think was safe, I ended up just kind of picking a spot. I think it was further down on the other side of the intersection, which we did look, didn't see it. Hope you enjoyed anyway. What happened here, Bonnie and Clyde and Henry Methvin were sitting somewhere in this region in their stolen V8. They were here to visit their families for Easter. It was April 1st, 1933. Bonnie had a little white rabbit with her that she was going to give her mom and she was sitting in the back seat petting her rabbit. She had named it Sunny and Henry Methvin was drinking and Bonnie was drinking as well, possibly even heavily. Bonnie had been hurt over the summer before, burned severely, very, very badly in a car wreck and she, she was burned down to the bone in that car wreck. She got trapped and it was either a combination of just plain old fire and or battery acid leaking out of the car. And she couldn't walk very well. So she was in the back seat and, and uh, Clyde was possibly even maybe taking a nap, but he was sober. He always made sure he was sober in case something happened. Three motorcycle cops drive by and they see them there and they think maybe they need help. The motorcycle officers were driving down Highway 114 and saw the car sitting here on Dove Road. As Polk Ivy went on, Wheeler and Murphy turned onto Dove Road to see what kind of trouble the people were having. They pull up, they get off, they have no concerns whatsoever, their guns are still holstered, Murphy's isn't even loaded. As they get off their motorcycles, Clyde, he's seen them, and he goes, let's take them. What he means is, let's kidnap them. He does this all the time. I've covered a couple of these kidnappings, one before this and one after in previous videos. But Methvin, who is drunk, potentially, he hears that and hears kill them. That's how he interprets it. So he opens fire on Wheeler. He gets him right in the chest. Wheeler goes down. Poor Murphy, who's brand new on the job. He's a trainee. He's literally with Wheeler trying to learn the job. He starts fumbling for his gun, which it's in its holster. And he's also fumbling with the rounds to load the gun. Clyde now knows he can't prevent anybody from dying. So he opens fire too and he shoots Murphy. Murphy falls into the dust and Methvin then coldly walks up and finishes Murphy off as he's laying on the ground. A couple from Dallas, Fred and Edith Giggle, were right behind the officers, but they were far enough back that they saw them turn off and by the time they reached the intersection, they saw the officers being shot. Their view was then blocked by trees, so Mr. Giggle did a U-turn turned around and came back so that they could see how everything ended up. And they reported that the taller of the two men walked up to one of the officers and shot him while he was on the ground. Everybody piled into the car. Clyde took off. He flew around the corner by the giggle couple. They were terrified at first, thinking they were about to be shot to death because they had just seen what happened. They were witnesses, but Clyde wasn't interested in that. He just wanted to get away. As he's driving away, he passes Elsie, his brother, driving all of the family that was coming to visit them. He slows down just enough to yell to Elsie, we're getting out of here, Henry just killed two cops. And he flew away, and Elsie said he did a U-turn, pulled in behind Clyde, but 
thought there was no way he was going to keep up with him at all. When Clyde wanted to get out, he flew. But there was a farmer who lived nearby, and I, I don't know where his farm would have been, but it's my understanding that he probably, from where he was, couldn't even see what happened here. 30 Sunday morning, I noticed a car parked on that hill, the man and woman in it. I never paid very much attention to it. I went to whole rocks on that hill up there, and I was right at that orchard, about 30 feet from the car. One was standing on either side of the car, they reached down and got their gun and came up when there's was about 10 feet away and says, boom, 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 with automatic shotgun. The man on the steering wheel side shot the man in front. The one on the other side shot over the radio and shot the man in the rear. The man in front fell flat of his back. The other man sort of spun around and fell with his face down the other way. William Schiffer told three versions. And the FBI chose to go with his version because it justified shooting 4 foot 11, 90 pound Bonnie 50 times. Making her look like a monster helped justify that. But according to Schiffer, in his first version, he was far away and couldn't see very well. In his second version, he was right there. He described what they were wearing, whether that or not that is actually what they were wearing, I don't know. But he said he saw Bonnie walk up and finish Murphy off, and she said, Wow, look at his head bounce! Just something really cold and cruel. And uh, by the third version, though, Bonnie and Clyde were both dead. And so after that, he started to claim, Well, actually, it was Bonnie's sister, Billy, and... Raymond Hamilton's brother, Floyd. You see, he wanted reward money, and he admitted this later. And by the time he started saying, well, it was totally other people, Hamer really started to get aggravated about this, and Billy had been arrested for it, and she was being held for murder. And Hamer at that point said, they didn't they didn't do this. This is ridiculous. And she and Floyd were both let go. And Hamer made a comment, there is no reason anyone should be in prison just because they happen to be related or associated with Bonnie and Clyde. I'm in the Texas Rangers Museum. And in this case are the belongings of patrolman Ed Wheeler, who died that day in Grapevine. He was carrying this firearm. He was wearing this badge on his uniform. He was badge number 33. This badge next to that one was on his hat. These are the handcuffs and the key to those handcuffs that he had on him that day. This is an example. It is a later time period, but it hadn't changed that much. I think it might be 1940, maybe. They kind of used this version from 33 to the late 40s. And this is how the two officers would have been dressed that day. Ed Wheeler's widow, Doris, she faced a tough future. She had to make it on her own now. She had to get a job. So she went to work for the Texas Rangers. At first, she was just secretarial help, office support position. But they formed a special brigade of female officers called the Petticoat Brigade. The Petticoat Rangers were women, there were four of them, who would go undercover with Texas Rangers, pretending to be married couples. They would infiltrate these illegal gambling rings, and they would take them down. And Doris was really instrumental in this. She was one of the four, obviously. Three of the women have been identified, and the fourth one, they have no idea who she was. Doris carried Ed's sidearm in her purse. The one he was wearing when he was killed, she carried that gun in her purse on every mission she went on. Uh, she was a really amazing woman. She did get remarried, and she's not buried by Ed. She's buried by her second husband, but she did work tirelessly to ensure that Murphy and her husband were never forgotten, and she was a part of getting the roadside, the roadside memorial put in on the site. H.D. Murphy was scheduled to be married on April 13th, 12 days after this, and the papers just went nuts at this story that potentially Bonnie is the one who 
executed him while he was on the ground. His fiance wore her wedding dress to his funeral. That, of course, was a massive story, and it was one that Clyde's mother found extremely upsetting as well. Not that she didn't find any of the others upsetting, but there was just something about that that just tore your heart out. And it was used to seal their fates, essentially. They lost public opinion at that point, which was the whole the whole goal. It was one of the reasons the FBI went with William Schiffer's account. Let's make them absolutely hate these guys. For them to stop being heroes, taking on the evil banks. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new to my channel and you made it to the end, then you're probably going to like my channel. And I hope you will consider supporting the channel by subscribing. I'll see you all next time.